Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Crafts Go Bloom. Today we're going to be making these no sew crochet lovebirds. I'm going to walk you through how to make one bird, but it's the same pattern no matter what color you'd like to make it in. And for these birds, I made them in the new Big Twist Posh yarn, or I should say it's new as of recording this. And I used some glitter eyes on the two of these, and I think they turned out really cute. And then I've also made this pattern in Bernat Blanket. And for this one, I just embroidered some little spots along the back. If you have been around for a long time, that is actually our original Crafts Go Bloom logo. It used to have a bird that was similar to this. And um, so the logo bird had these little spots on it. So that's kind of a nod to our original logo. So if you'd like to make them in different yarns, you've got some different size options. I have seen people comparing the Big Twist Posh to Parfait Chunky, and it seems like those are pretty similar in size. They don't have so much of a difference as Big Twist Posh and Burnett Blanket. The way this pattern is going to work is I will have the pattern written across the screen like this, and I may be going a little faster than you, and I may even time lapse some spots in the video. If it's going faster than you're able to keep up with, definitely just hit pause finish what you're working on and then come back for the next round. I love to watch these kinds of videos while I'm also watching a TV show or something like that. So I tend to pause them anyhow. So that was the intention behind the style of video. Let's get into our supplies for today. I'm going to be using Big Twist Posh. And what is this one called? This is called Whipped Cream. That is the white color that they have it in. I'm going to be using that for the belly of the bird. This one I made in their, their lighter pink, but today I'm going to be using this like neon pink called Strawberry Glow. I think that's going to show up on camera a little bit nicer, and I'm excited to see what this turns out like in such a neon color. And then for the beak in the feet, I have Black Sesame. Some other supplies I'm going to need are some stuffing. I have a 10 pound box of polyfill sitting off to the side, a tapestry needle, a stitch marker, safety eyes. I'm going to be using 12 millimeter safety eyes today and safety eyes are not intended for any children who are still putting toys in their mouth. If they're still chewing on anything you should not use these and you should just um, do a magic ring and put like six or eight single crochets into the magic ring until you get a circle the size that you want and sew that on. I also have a pair of sharp scissors and I'm going to be using a size four and a half crochet hook today. For today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make the feet in this bright pink yarn that I'm using just because you can see the different layers of yarn. You will need to make them in black to match the pattern but as you can see, it's very hard to see those individual stitches and it's hard enough to see a black yarn in person, if you know what I mean. So I have already made the feet in black to set aside, but I'm going to walk you through how to make it in pink so that you can see what's happening here. So we're going to start with a slip stitch and we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Now starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to make another slip stitch and then we're going to make another slip stitch. So we've got starting in the second chain from the hook and then we've got two slip stitches. Now we're going to chain two and we're going to do the same thing. Start in that second chain from the hook, make a slip stitch. Now go back in to where you made your second slip stitch before. We're going to keep going back into that original starting place. And then chain two, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch back in that starting point. Now you've got your three talons sticking off the end there. And then we're going back up the leg and you should have two stitches left. And we're going to slip stitch two more times. And then to finish off, you're just going to yarn over. And then I leave a tail about this long. And that's what we're going to be using to tie them into the project. So don't cut your tails too short and don't weave it in. And hold this up here so you can see it a little bit better. 
This is the top of your foot and this is the bottom. Honestly, it does not matter if you accidentally tie these on upside down. The main thing is you want to make sure you have two feet going the same direction at the end of the pattern. So go ahead and make your second foot have two of those set off to the side with their tails ready to go for the end of the pattern. And let's get back to our main color to start the bird. For this pattern, we're going to start with a magic ring. I'm going to hold the yarn across my hand like this and grab it with my thumb. Wrap around the back, then pinch the yarn there on that X. Go across the back of my hand, grab it with my pinky. Then I'm going to stick my hook under the front loop, grab the back loop, give that a twist. And then I'm going to grab this yarn over here by my pinky and pull that through. And we'll straighten everything out here and we've got a magic ring. If you've never done that before, please feel free to rewatch and pause and rewatch and pause until you've got it down. And I promise it does get easier if it still looks confusing. I can do it without looking now. So for round one, we're gonna single crochet seven into this magic ring. And we're gonna do that by inserting our hook into the middle of the magic ring, yarning over and pulling up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to pull on the tail that we have to close our magic ring, making sure that we're just pulling it until it's tight. We don't want to pull so tight that we snap the yarn because that can definitely happen. And then insert that stitch marker into the last stitch of the round so that we know where to stop when we get to the next round. And for round two, we're going to increase in every stitch. And we're going to repeat that pattern seven times for a total of 14 stitches. And an increase is just doing two single crochets into the same space. So one, two, three, four, five, six. My yarn is following me. Seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. For round three, we're going to increase and then single crochet one, and we're going to repeat that pattern seven times for a total of 21 stitches. So we've got our increase first, and then in the next stitch, we're just going to single crochet one. We're not going to do anything else. And then we're going to repeat that. So we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. For rounds four, five, and six, we're only going to single crochet 21 around for a total of 21 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
and then 21. So that was round four. Now for rounds five and six, you're just going to repeat the exact same thing. I'm going to finish that off camera and I'll meet you back here. I finished rounds four, five, and six, and it's starting to look like this. It will definitely start cupping and you want to make sure that the tail is on the inside. You can kind of see the difference in the way that these stitches look. This is the outside and we're crocheting around the outside. Now that I'm finished with round six, I have this fairly annoying knot in my yarn coming up here. So I'm gonna back up just a little bit and fix that problem. Give myself a little bit of a tail to work with here. And I'm gonna cut that out. And then I'm just going to pretend that I'm trying to do a color change with my yarn. So I'm going to begin the next single crochet, bring up a loop, and switch to that, that other yarn there, the new working yarn. And I'm going to crochet over these tails to sink those in there and not have to weave them in at all. And that is honestly not particular to this pattern at all, just something I came across, so I thought I would leave it in here. And um, it also explains why I'm gonna have some tails that I'm crocheting over, but you guys won't. And this is the method I use if I can't just crochet around that knot, and I tried it on here, but it just wasn't, wasn't working out how I wanted it to. So it's easier to just start over like that. So for round seven, the first thing we're going to do is start with 10 single crochets. And then on that 10th one, um, we're going to change to the beak color. Two, three, four, five, and I'm happy with my, my silly yarn tails. We'll get those out of our way now. Six, seven, eight, nine, and on that 10th one, all I'm gonna do is insert my hook, pull up a loop, and switch to black. Just the same as I just did with that pink, but now we're actually switching to that black beak color. I'm going to put the black tail down and crochet over the pink with the black working yarn. So I have the black tail down here on purpose because we're gonna use it to tie a knot later. And for the beak on this bird, we are going to single crochet, half double crochet, and single crochet all in the front loops of the next stitch. So I'm gonna go under the front loop only, but I'm also crocheting over this tail. So that's also on top of my hook. Then I'm going to do one single crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and I've got a half double crochet, and then I'm gonna do one more single, but at the end of that, we're gonna switch right back to the pink. And then we have 10 more single crochets to finish out the round. Whoops. Eight, nine, and then ten. Now I'm going to leave that black attached for one more round, and then we're going to cut it and tie it off. So just work around that right now, and if it starts to get twisted right here, you can just flip everything over, straighten it back out again, and keep on going. Now for round eight, we're gonna start off with 10 single crochets again. Five, six, seven, eight, 
and 10. Now behind the beak, we have the back loop that was left behind when you went in the front loops only. And we're going to single crochet one under that beak. Now completely skip the beak and make sure you're going into the main body color. I'm using pink right now. So I'm going to completely skip the black, go over to the pink and single crochet 10 more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then at the end of that round, you're going to have 21 stitches. Now I'll pull out that working yarn and take a look at that black yarn that's in our way. Remember, we've already crocheted the feet, so we don't need to keep the black yarn for that. I'm going to cut a tail that's about the same length as the tail that I have on the other side of the beak. And we're going to tie a knot. If you crocheted over the pink, but you left the black, like I said before, then you're able to just tie these together on the inside and you can tie those knots very tightly. And that's just going to cinch everything down in there. It's a little difficult to see this on camera, but you'll be able to feel that it sort of makes like a little, little notch under there. If you're using the Bernat blanket, you're really going to notice that there's like a little bit of a, a notch under the beak and it kind of cups downward. And since we're at a stopping point, I'm also going to put my eyes in. Now the eyes are going to go between rounds six and seven, about four stitches apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, more important than getting them four stitches apart is making sure they're centered around the beak. When a pattern says that they are four stitches apart when you're placing eyes, it's usually just giving you a guideline and then you just need to make sure that, that everything is lined up and looking how you want it to look. So I've got the backs on those eyes. You just press those down over the eye. They're both sunk in there and we're ready to move on. Now for round nine, you're going to single crochet 21 all the way around for a total of 21 stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oops. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Got a lot of tails in there. Gotta move them out of the way. 19, 20, and 21. Now in round 10, we've got quite a bit of instruction. So I'm going to put it on the screen for a second here and not do anything else and just give you a second to read through it. And what we're doing is starting to make the tail that sticks out the back here. So we get some, some tail feathers and it helps it to sit flat. Now I'm just going to break down round 10 a little bit by little bit. And so let's get started on the beginning. The first thing we're going to do is single crochet one. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Then starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to single crochet in the next two. We're going to single crochet one in the same space where we started. When we started the round, we did one single crochet. We're going to go back into that space. And then we're just going to do five regular single crochets. One, two, three, four, 
and five. Up next, we're going to do five double crochets all in the front loops only of the next stitch. So for a double crochet, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, and remember we're only going through the front loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then that's one double crochet and we need five of them. So for the next one, we're gonna yarn over, make sure we're only going through that front loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we need to do three more. That's one, two, three, four. And when we get to this fifth double crochet, we're gonna change colors at the end of it. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops and then stop and grab the white. And what we're doing here is making this first wing and then we're gonna make that white that goes in between the wings next. So we're at the end of our double crochet, we're gonna grab the white and we're going to yarn over and pull through the top of that double crochet. And then we're gonna hold on to our two tails and crochet over them. And in the white, we're going to single crochet nine across the front of the belly. Now we've got these five double crochets in that front loop and they can sometimes lay flat and cover up our stitches. So you wanna make sure that you are going to the very next stitch after the front loop only. So I've got my tails in the front and I'm going to single crochet nine in white. I've got one. Eight and nine. Now when I get to that ninth stitch, I'm going to drop both of the whites. I'm going to pick up the pink and pull through with that. And then in the next stitch, we're going to make the other wing. So same thing again. We're going to do five double crochets all in the same stitch and all in the front loop only. And then after that wing, we're going to do eight more single crochets. So we can take out that stitch marker for right now because we're going to move where we actually end the round. So make sure you're going in the next stitch right after those double crochets. And that's going to be one, two, three, four, and five. Those all go in just like normal. Now for the sixth one, I'm going to reach across over here there's a little bit of a gap there, and so I'm going to fill in that gap with the sixth crochet, single crochet, and then you're going up the two back loops of the chain that we made much earlier at the beginning of the round. And then we've got our eight total between the wing and the tail feather. We'll put that stitch marker back in, give it a look, double check that your wings are looking like they're centered with the face. If they are incorrect at all, um, if you yarn under, I yarn over. If you yarn under, your wings can end up in different places for sure. And so you wanna double check that they're actually lining up the way that you want them to. If they're not, then what you need at the end of your round is 36 stitches total, and that's including the wings. And it's okay if you need to remove a single crochet from the white move your wing over, and then just do another single crochet in pink in the back, for example. Whatever is just gonna make it look correct at the end, but this is how it always works out for me. So you should have something that looks like this on the back uh, after round 10. Moving on to round 11, we're gonna start by single crocheting eight. Okay. 
And if your white yarn is starting to get tangled up like mine, flip the whole project over a couple of times, however many you need to get that out of your way. After you do those eight single crochets, you're going to single crochet one in the back loop only under the wing from round 10. However, you're going to just get it started and then you're going to color change to the white. So let's reach in there, make sure we're grabbing the working yarn of the white. Hold the pink down out of your way. I'm not going to be crocheting over the pink now because I don't want it to show through on the white belly. We just did that on the top. So we're going to pull the white through and then single crochet nine across those white stitches on the front of the belly. And then on that ninth stitch, and then on that ninth stitch, you're going to yarn over with the pink and pull through and do a color change. Then we're going right back under the next wing to single crochet one in the back loop only. And then make sure you're skipping all of the double crochets and finding the next single crochet. And do eight more single crochets up the back of the tail. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. For round 12, we're going to single crochet nine in the pink, and then we're going to switch to the white and do nine, and then we're going to switch back to the pink and do nine. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Switch to the white. And it can be a little finicky trying to make sure that you get the right working yarn and you're not hooking any of those tails on the inside. just takes a little practice and it's pretty easy to get the hang of once you get used to it. Got my nine in white, so I'm going to switch back to the pink, tighten down that stitch, and make sure you're going under those stitches that are kind of under the wing. eight and nine. However, on that last stitch of the round, we're going to switch to white. We're going to single crochet over top of the pink a little bit, and then we're going to be done with it. Because the bottom of this bird is white. So we're going to carry the pink yarn over here and crochet over that for a little bit. And for round 13, we're just going to single crochet 27 all the way around for a total of 27 stitches. So I'm going to go over this pink yarn for six or eight stitches and then cut that off and leave it on the inside. And then we'll be able to finish this project in white. So we've got four, five, six, seven, I'm going to stop at eight because I don't want that pink yarn carried across the front. I don't want it to be seen at all as it's being carried. And we're just working with our white for the rest of the pattern. And then we will also put the feet in soon. So sticking all those tails down in there, we've got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19. I got my yarn following me again. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 20. Whoops. Gotta be careful. I'm getting caught inside of those tails on the inside because it's going a little too fast. And that's 26 and 27. Round 14, we're going to start by invisible decreasing four times. And if you're unfamiliar with that, um, I'm going to do my best to show you how this works, but I do understand it is a little harder to see the white than it is to see the pink stitches. So to make an invisible decrease, you're going to start by going through the front loops only of the next two stitches, yarn over and pull through both of those, and then yarn over and pull through those two loops. And you've made a single crochet going through those two front loops and you're turning two stitches into one stitch and that's how we're decreasing. So I've got one, two, three, four, and then we're going to do three single crochets. One, two, three, and then we're going to do three invisible decreases again. And then we have four single crochets. and then three invisible decreases to finish the round. Then once you're done with that round, pull out that working yarn and we're gonna work on the feet and once we're done with the feet, we're going to add the stuffing. So we just finished round 14 and the feet get added between rounds 13 and 14. So bring those back. Remember what we talked about earlier that you want to try and get the right side facing up with your stitches for your feet. However, the most important thing is that both of them are going the same direction. So if you really can't figure it out, just pick the side you like and point them the same way and everything will turn out great. The way I figure out where to put my feet, so we're going in between these, these last two rounds that we just did, and the way that I figure that out is by taking my hook and going straight down from each of the eyes, and we're going to take one of the feet and pull a loop in, really just pull the tail in, and then we're going to go over one stitch so that there's something to tie around on the inside. And I'm just going to pull these through and then let it sit there for a minute while I get the second one in there to see what I think about the placement of them. I don't want to tie them in permanently and then they're off center. Then I'm going to pull all these black tails down from the feet and just take a look at it. Make sure I think that they are looking straight, looking centered on the nose, or excuse me, on the beak and the eyes. And I'm pretty happy with that. One side is, is uh, pulling in a little bit because of how I'm holding them. But once we get some stuffing in there, I think it's going to look great. So go ahead and tie these tails together 
making sure that you're tying the two tails from the same foot, that you're not um, mixing those up and tying the left foot to the right foot. That's going to pull the front of your bird in different directions and it's not going to look the way we want it to in the end. I've got my feet all tied in there. I'm gonna tuck those tails up in the bird and it is time to add stuffing. Now I can feel where I have a couple of crisscrossing tails on the inside. So I'm going to stuff the main part of the body, but then I'm gonna make sure that if there are any like little gaps where there aren't, where I don't actually have any stuffing from those tails we were carrying, that you stuff up in front of those between like the tail and the body. We don't want any gaps anywhere. As I'm adding stuffing, sometimes it's moving the eyes around. So I just grab them with my fingernails and then sort of reposition them. Or you can go from the inside and sort of move them around. You just don't want the backs of the eyes to like get pushed up because then your eyes start to, to face downward or, or in whatever direction they're getting pushed around inside of there. So I think that that is enough stuffing for the body for right now. We're gonna make another round and then it'll be much easier for us to stuff the rest of the tail. So for round 15, we're going to do eight invisible decreases and then single crochet one. Some of these stitches can be just a little bit difficult to, to get to because you're having to hold on to this big round bird now. We're not just crocheting something flat anymore. So for the purposes of this video, I am holding it out away from my body and resting it on the table. But if I wasn't filming a video, I would be holding it against my leg um, or just holding it closer to my body and um, using something else to kind of stabilize it can help you if you're having trouble with these at the end. And then I'm gonna take my stitch marker out, do that last single crochet, and we are going to finish off because this is our last round. And I'm also pushing down that stuffing, trying to be careful that I'm not pulling up stuffing with every stitch. So to finish off, I just chain one and we're gonna cut a pretty long tail here. And I'm gonna pull out the yarn. We're done with our hook. And now you've probably got this little gap here in the tail where there's no stuffing. So now is the last chance to add some more. So I'm gonna stuff the tail. And when we're done adding stuffing, we're gonna be um, sewing this closed. So now really is the last chance to add any more that you would wanna to add to it. I like to add a little more stuffing than some other crocheters because I like to make sure that once it gets squished a bunch of times, it's not going to start looking flat. It's still going to hold its shape, but still has plenty of squish in it. Let's get that needle threaded. And we're gonna go through the front loops only of the nine stitches in the last round. And as I go along, I'm pulling just a little bit, cinching just a little bit on each stitch. Sometimes if you loop through all of the front loops and then you try to pull it closed all at one time, it can get stuck and snap your yarn. And that's never fun anytime it happens, but it's definitely not that fun when you get to uh, this point in a project when you're almost done and then you have to figure out a way to reattach some yarn. I'm gonna give it one more. And then I like to stick my hook back in. Let's see, I'm gonna go over here. And I'm gonna weave through a few more single crochets just to really 
lock that yarn in there cut your tail and there you go we are finished with this no sew crochet lovebird pattern now if you're anything like me i'm starting to think that this looks very much like a flamingo color and i do have a flamingo specific pattern and so i can link that down below if you're interested i will also have a pdf pattern on my website linked down below so leave me a comment let me know what you think of this video and what color did you make your bird in and I would love to see you in the next crochet tutorial. Bye guys.